I'm excited. Everybody excited about Man Up? Girl. Let's let the men go. Raw. Now, if you don't, if you haven't seen that video, it, that movie, you need to see it. It's called Men of Honor, uh, and, and it's about a Navy diver, and he loses his leg. And what's going on in this scene is he's got a prosthetic leg on. And in order for him to continue as a Navy diver, he has to put on these hundreds of pounds of gear and walk 10 steps. Now, the guy doesn't want him to do it because obviously he's going to put this gear on and go to the water. And so he challenges him. And so he takes 10 steps with a prosthetic leg on. I'm sorry if I'm ruining the movie, but it's still good. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of the climax of the movie. But there's other things in there. It's not, it's not just it, okay? It's a good movie. But, but anyway, uh, I encourage you. So today, ladies, I know that you're like, oh, man, four weeks of man up. I promise you, I promise you there will be some things in here, ladies, for you. Uh, and if you don't, you ladies that are not married yet, this is a good four weeks to listen about a man. If you need to make a list of the man that you want to marry, this four weeks is going to be a good list of the man that you need to marry, okay? So take some notes. You hear that, Jasmine? Take some notes. These are going to be the man that you need to marry when you're 50, right? 50. 50. I mean, easy. Perfect age, okay? And, and so now, ladies, here's what I need you to do for me. The Holy Spirit can work just fine without your elbows in the ribs, okay? So if you could do me a favor and not give the Holy Spirit elbows the entire time I preach, I guarantee your man will listen to me a little bit better. What I also don't want you to do is when you get to lunch, go, <laughs> when you get to lunch, I don't want you to go, now what'd you say about what the preacher had to say today? What do you think about that? You gonna work a little better at home? That's not gonna help either. You just stay quiet and let the Holy Spirit work because you are not your husband's Holy Spirit, all right? He can handle it without you. I know that's, that's hard for you ladies, right? He can handle it without you. Right? He made a way when there was no way, and I believe he's going to do it again, right? Mo, get back up here. Let's go. I'm feeling it again. <laughs> you busy? Okay. You mean to get you a good shot there? Okay. <laughs> All right. So growing up in church, I, I've, I've had the opportunity to attend both men's and women's conference. I'd never attended a women's conference before uh, I was a pastor. And so I got the invite as the pastor to come and, and do a couple things the last time we had a women's conference. And I noticed a marked difference between women's conference and men's conference. Women's conference go like this. You are such a delicate power. God loves you so much. You are a called Woman, mighty warrior, warrior, princess of God. That's the women's conference, right? Okay. Here's the men's conference. You're stupid. Why don't you go home and do something and quit sitting on the couch? That's the difference between the men's and women's conference, right? That's the difference. And I've always gone, I wonder why men sometimes don't like church. Because we, we tell the ladies, you're beautiful, God loves you. Then we tell the men, you're stupid, get off the couch and get to work. So guys, I promise you, I promise you, I will give you some good stuff. It's not going to all be, you're stupid, get off the couch. But here's what I want you to understand. If you'll stick with me for four weeks, I'll give you the design of what God has called us to be as men. And we'll be better men for it. Because ultimately, if church is done right, church should be a place that masculinity should be able to flourish because strong men are needed to build a strong church. Strong men are needed to build a strong church. You know, throughout history, we've seen that when the men don't step up, the ladies are there. We don't really have to tell the ladies to step up. They just kind of know. But throughout history, we've had to tell the men to step up. And so this week, we're going to go through four weeks. It's going to be fun. We've got some good topics for you. Uh, I know some of them are good. Some of them are going to kick you in the face. Uh, well, I'm going to kick you here in the face. You know, we at Hope Church, we love kicking in the face. That's all we can do. Um, but today, I just wanted to start us off with why were men created? Why were men created? What is... And my, my sub point is, what is biblical masculinity? 
What does it look like to be a man? Because in our culture, it tells us that masculinity is toxic. But here's the thing. God created men to be distinctly who they are, and that is different than ladies. We're not created to be the same. We're created equal, but not the same. I'll get to that in a minute. So if you have your Bibles, grab them. Go to Genesis 1, 26. If I was going to show you how men were created, where do you think we need to go? Genesis, the beginning. So let's go there. Genesis 1, verse 26. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and all the earth and over the earth, creeping things that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him. Skip down chapter 2, verse 7. Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living creature. Now, if you'll notice, there's only a few times in the Bible that God breathes, but every time he breathes, he's breathing in the very presence of himself in us. Notice, God didn't breathe his presence in the fish. He didn't breathe his presence in the birds. Birds. He breathed his presence in us. So first let me be clear for you ladies. I'm not saying that only man is created in the image of God. I'm saying male and female are created in the image of God. God doesn't have a gender. God does not exist in our, our world. So he has no need for a gender. So what I'm saying is, is male and female are created in his image. But God created us men distinctly different. And so, guys, what I've noticed in our world is sometimes there's more outrage when people beat an animal than when a human being is harmed. You know, it bothers me. And, it, it, and some of our laws, if you look at them, the police are coming after me. If, if you look at the laws, I didn't do it. It wasn't me. Um, and, and you'll see with some of our laws that there seems to be stricter, stricter penalties for harming, harming the babies or unborn animals over human beings. Now listen, this is not a political statement. This is not a red or blue statement. But what I want you to know is all human life is valuable. From the point of creation. The Bible tells us that God intricately knitted us together in our mother's womb. And created us humans in his likeness. Not, not outside the womb, but he created us where? Inside the womb and breathed his life in us. All of us are valuable to him. And guys... We, as a culture, have to learn to bring value to that. And so what I want us to hear is that the life of every human being is valuable to God. No one is more valuable than another. Just because you were born in America doesn't make you more valuable than the rest of the world. Now, this is not a political statement either. But in our world, we seem to make everything political. But guys, just because we live in these United States does not mean that we deserve a better life than anybody else. God loves each and every one of his creations equally. And he made us equal. Guys, as the church, we have to understand that equality should not be a conversation because God breathed in us all the same we are all same, the same. None is better than another. And guys, the way we fix racism is in the church or racism in the world is if the church rises up. You know, in, in all of this that has been going on, I've been doing my research. I'm a researcher. I like to look at stuff. I like to read stuff. And the one thing I noticed that is in the 50s and 60s, when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., reverend, he was a pastor, when he led his marches, it began as a prayer service, and then they marched. 
It was a march that was begun with prayer. So do you think we could solve the racial issues in our world if we pray, seek the Lord, ask him for his answers? But guys, the church has to rise up and lead the way. We cannot expect the world to lead the way. We cannot expect the world to fix a sin problem. We as the church have to go after the sin problem. Because we are the ones that are the redeemed, the called of God. Now that's not going to get a whole lot of amens, but it should land with you. Why were we created as men? Number one, we are created to bear God's image. And number two, men were created to work and to guard. To work and to guard. Genesis 2.15 says, The Lord God took man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it. And keep it. Now, many of us work, and working is hard. Now, we think that work is a result of sin, and work is a result of the fallen world. But if you'll notice in Genesis 2 15, this is before the fall. So, God created Adam to work even before sin entered in the world. So, men were created to work. He was not created as a guardian or gardener, he was created as a guardian or watchman. He was created to protect and to work and to steward all the things that God had given him. Now, I didn't realize how much men were called to be guardians until my wife got pregnant. Now, a weird thing happens, and Amanda, you can tell them all about it because you were just pregnant recently. A weird thing happens when you're pregnant. Random people come up and touch your belly, right? You've never seen them in your whole life, and they're like, oh, oh, right, April? And, 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 uh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> all the time. People just come up randomly and touch your belly, right? And, and I didn't realize how protective I was till these random people in Walmart start coming up to my wife, and all this rage wells up inside me. I'm like, get away from her, right? I'm like, Psh, in Walmart, get away. Or, or somebody will run into her with a cart at Walmart. I'm like, can't you see this woman's pregnant? You're hitting her with a grocery cart. And you, I never realized. And then when the kid comes out, you're like, nobody touch him. Nobody touch him. He's my baby. It's like football running through Heisman Trophy. You don't realize until you have it how all that is just welling up inside of you. But guys, God has created us to steward all the things that he has given us. He, call, he called Adam to care for the garden. He calls us as men to care for our wife, to care for our kids, to care for our family. We are called to be guardians and watchmen. Guys, a man was created not only to work hard, but to steward everything. Guys, we were created to work. As men, that's what we do. We're not created to sit on the couch. The number one thing I see with men, when men get in trouble, is when men are bored. When we have nothing to do, that's when we get in trouble. Because men were created to work. They were created to steward. They were created to guard. They were created to cultivate the things that they were given. And so guys, for me, I don't, I don't rest well. In, in fact, my wife will tell you, I know she's probably in the kids right now. She'll tell you that she'll ask me, she'll go, will you rest today? Sure. So I'll go rest. I'll sit on the couch, watch some TV. About 10, 15 minutes will go by. And I'm like, all right, what are we going to do now? I can't, I can't sit all day. I can't do this. Because God has created us men to work, to guard, to steward. And so ladies, don't press that down in us. Encourage us to work. Encourage us to guard. Sometimes you have to push us towards the right things to steward and to guard. But don't beat men down that want to work hard. Cultivate that. Encourage them. Encourage them to do good. So men were created to bear God's image, to work and to guard. And number three, men were not created to be alone. Men were not created to be alone. Now I want you to understand the sequence. God created man, God gave him a job, and then what? Genesis 2, 18, 
Then the Lord God said, it's not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. So guys, gals, God gave man, he created him, he gave him a job, and then what did he do? He gave him a wife. Young ladies, understand this. Understand and listen. Do not marry a man if he has not completed the first. God gave the man what? A job. And then he gave him a wife. I mean, I don't think you got that. God gave man what? A job. And then he gave him a wife. So if your man does not have a job, you shall not allow him to make him hurt you. Whatever. Your wife. You get it. (laughs) Made sense in my head. It just didn't come out that way. You know what I mean, okay? And guys, but God created Eve to be the perfect fit for Adam. In fact, you'll see that, that God created Eve, and then when he brought Eve to Adam, what did he say? Oh, this is good. Now, if you'll notice, if, you, if you're biblical scholars, it took one verse for God to create man. Quiz. How many verses did it take to create women? Six. So you're a little bit more complex than us. Surprise! <laughs> And so, man was created different than woman. We're one verse. We're not complex. We're not six verses, okay? We need a job. We need a woman. We need need her to love us. That's all we need. And then food somewhere, somewhere. But that comes with the job. So, you know, we'll get it. But guys, what this world needs is it needs men to step up and do the right things. Unfortunately, what we have a lot of in this world is boys that can shave. A bunch of boys that look like men that don't act like men. Because men do what? Men provide for their families. Men don't date. They court their wife. Guys, I was never interested in dating a whole bunch of ladies. I wanted to find a wife. Because dating didn't interest me. I wanted a wife. I wanted to find what was good. That was my goal. And you'll see that in our culture, we're not looking to find what is good. We're like, we're looking to find all the benefits of marriage with none of the commitment. Now, ladies, do not let him have all of the benefits of marriage with none of the commitment because then he'll never commit. Okay? I I know I'm stepping in deep in here. I don't care. It's Father's Day. I can do whatever I want. It's Father's Day. Right? I can do whatever I want. I had four kids. What else do I need to do? It's Father's Day. But guys, men will never act like men until we hold them to that standard. And ladies, value yourself. Make him treat you like a lady. You deserve to be a wife. That's what you deserve. And make him act like a man and put a ring on it. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. You got that? You got it by? Look, looking for a worship pastor. Anybody? <laughs> Do you know anybody, Grant? <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. But also in our culture, you see a lot of fatherlessness. Men don't step up and wed their wives. They also don't father their children. Because guys, on this Father's Day, there's a big difference between being a father and being a dad. There is no shortage of fathers in this world, but there's a big shortage on dads. So let me give you some statistics from the U.S. Department of Justice about fatherless homes, if you don't believe me. So... The suicide rate in teens, of those teens that commit suicide, 63% of those come from fatherless homes. Of runaways, 90% of youth or homeless come from fatherless homes. 85% of children that exhibit behavior disorders come from fatherless homes. 
71% of all high school dropouts come from fatherless homes. 70% of all juvenile delinquents in state operated institutions come from fatherless homes. 75% of adolescent patients in substance abuse centers come from fatherless homes. Do you think we have a dad issue? We do. We need dad in our life. And guys, what I want you to hear today, if you hear nothing else, being a man means stepping up and doing the right thing, even when it's not the fun thing. The reason we see a lot of boys that can shave is they want to do the fun things. It's fun to act married without being married. That's a whole lot of fun. It's hard to be married. It's hard to put a ring on it and take a wife who you have to love and every part of her you have to love, good and bad, and love her even on the days that it's not easy. That's not easy. And if you want to know what being a dad is like, you get married, she loves you, you're the object of all her adoration, then what happens? You have kids, then what happens, John? You go right to the bottom of the food chain. And then you have to hold up the food chain and make sure no one dies. And that's what being a dad is. We hold up the food chain from the bottom. But here's the thing. We're called to do the hard things even when it's not fun. You'll see later. Guys, you're called to lead and love your family. You're called to do it. Not when your wife treats you well. That's what you're called to do. Period. Regardless of what they do. And it's not always easy. But the reason we don't have a lot of dads, the reason we don't have a whole lot of husbands in this world is because doing that is not easy, but it is good. Those of us that are dads and fathers doing the right thing, we'll tell you, it's the greatest and most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. It is toughest and most rewarding. But that's the way God designed it to be. And one day, they'll grow up, and Maddie's, Maddie's getting old enough now. I'm, I'm seeing some of the rewards of being dad. I got a sunburn at, uh, at Pirate's Cove a few weeks, a few, about a week back. And she goes, oh, dad, oh, she goes, let me rub that aloe vera on you. And she rubs it ever so soft. Mom just, psh, 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 <laughs> just wipes it all over here. <laughs> like, my wife, she's like, oh, you got sunburn? Rub that aloe vera on you. <laughs> then Maddie, Maddie just squirts it out and just goes very softly. I'm like, oh, I'm going to have skin after this is all over. It's really nice. <laughs> and it's, just, it's in those little moments that you realize, you know, this is the coolest thing. Your kids get to show you that they love you. Some of you have older kids and they don't act like they know you anymore in public. And that's okay. But the cool thing is when they get grown and they're broken down on the side of the road, who are they going to call? They're going to call dad. When our life falls apart, when the tire falls off our truck, who do we call? We call dad. Because dad is always there. So guys, what I want you to understand, I know some of you out there, some of you out there, guys, you have kids. Some of you don't. Some of your kids have moved out of the house. But here's one thing that the church me, Jasmine, he wants you to move out quicker. Here's one of the things. <laughs> Hurry up, let's go. <laughs> here's one of the things we have to understand. We never stop being a dad. Because guys, men, there are, there are young men in this church that need a spiritual dad in their life. They don't have at home a, guy, a dad at home. And what we're called to do as men of the church, is we're called to step up and be dad. We're step up to be fathers to the fatherless. And that's what we have to do. If we see a young man in our church that needs a dad, we step up and love them. If we see a widow in the church that needs some help, we help them. If we see a single mom with kids, what do we do? We step up, we help them, we mow their lawn, we do those things that dads do. We are the father to the fatherless. 
And that's what I'm saying. That's how I'm saying a strong church is built with strong men because men step up and do what's need to be done. Said in the last service, I'll say it in this. If I need something done as a pastor, all I should have to do is go to the men's breakfast and talk to the men. Say, guys, let's get this done. And so, what I want you to understand is there is no shame in this place. If you haven't been the man that you need to be, step up. Let's go. It's time to do it. If you need to to wed your soon-to-be wife, do it. If you need to be a dad to someone, do it. It's time to step up. You know, and I've always said this as pastor, and I'll say it again. When you know better, do better. I'm not concerned with the past. The past is the past. Now you know better, so do better. Don't beat yourself up on what was. Beat yourself up over now. You are only control. You only have control from now on. So what does this mean for us? What does this mean for you in your life today? I have three questions, then we'll go on and... If you want to stay, we're going to do the drawing in the the lobby, Facebook Live, for the the grill and the the Mother's Day slaw package, $150 to Amani. And so if you're not here and when you win it, you have one hour to claim your prize or I'll be going to get a massage on Monday. Um, You think I'm kidding. Uh, (laughs) My first question is, Do you see your value as an image bearer? Do you see your value as an image bearer? Now, what I want us to understand is every man, woman, and child in this room bears the image of God. And I think sometimes we we think that God is in love with a future version of us. No, no, no. God doesn't love you when you get things figured out. God loves you now. God loves you right where you are, warts and all. He loves you just the way you are. When my kids came out, they had stuff all over them, and the first thing I wanted to do was hold them. All gross, bloody, whatever. That was my kid. It didn't matter. I have a hoodie that will never be the same because I held my kids can't get that stuff out. Doesn't come out. I'm just letting you know. So, guys, when you have kids, wear clothes that you don't want to use anymore. Um, but I love my kids. And what God do, God's love for you never changes. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter how far you've run away from Him. He loves you because you bear His image just the way you are. He's not waiting for you to change. He wants you to change. He wants you to get closer to Him. But His love for you doesn't change. Number two, are you stewarding your gifts? Guys, all of us, God has given us something. Are we stewarding it? God has given me a wife and four kids. That is what I'm called to steward. That is called what I'm called to push forward. Am I doing what God has put me on this earth to do? Guys, it's not too late to be a great dad. It's not too late to be a spiritual father to a young man that needs it. And number three, is it time to step up and be a father to the fatherless? Guys, if someone doesn't have a dad, they should look no place else but the church. Because there's plenty of dads here. There's plenty of dads that'll rock the dad jokes, mow the lawns, do all the things that dads do. Teach you how to change a tire teach you how to check your oil. Did you know you're supposed to change it? Dads teach you that. Did you know you're supposed to wipe the oil off the dipstick so that you, when you put it back in, you know that it's correct? Did you know that, Jasmine? Dads teach you that. Level ground, yeah. Nate taught me that. 
<laughs> I don't do anything. When, it, when, it, when the miles is up, I call Nate. That's all I do. <laughs> but guys, we need, there's so many young men in here that need fathers. Will you step up and be the dad that they need? So I'm about to pray. And then you are dismissed. If you'd like to stay around, we're going to go and jump on Facebook Live out in the lobby to do the Father's Day Grill giveaway and the Amani gift card giveaway. So if, you, uh, if you'd if you like to stay for that, you can step out of the lobby. Uh, you don't have to. Those of you that are picking up your kids, if you could be patient and not make a huge line, that, that'll help them. They're getting your kids as fast as possible. We're trying to be as safe as possible, not as getting so many people back there. You know all the drill. Just be patient. Hey, but I want you to know, guys, I love you. This is going to be a great series. It's time for us to man up and be strong men of God. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you today that you are an amazing God. Lord, I thank you that on this Father's Day, we can all step up and be the men of God that you've called us to be. Lord, and I thank you for all these ladies in here that love us, that care for us, that 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 love us even though sometimes we're not the man that we're called to be. But Lord, I pray that you would just help us help us step up and be those guys that we're called to be to everybody that's in here. Lord, I thank you for everybody that's in this room today. Lord, I thank you they've taken time out of their busy week to come and worship you and put you first in their life. And Lord, I pray that you would just bless us as a church as we continue to seek after you. And Lord, I just pray as we go our separate ways, Lord, you would just bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name, amen.